gray whales, 45 to 46 feet long and 30 to 40 tons, yet their ability to migrate thousands of miles is simply amazing. The gray whale migration is one of the longest mammalian migrations which averages 10,000 to 14,000 miles round trip. In this video, I will talk about when, where, and why gray whales migrate. In December, gray whales make their annual migration from the cold Alaskan Bering Sea to the warmer Baja waters in the Gulf of California. This migration is the, in the south to the south takes two to three months. They usually stay around the warm, salty Baja Magdalena, Laguna Ojo de Libre, and Laguna San Ignacio Lagoons. Gray whales leave their home in the Bering Sea to go to the Baja for most likely one reason, breeding. Some people believe that the reason why they stay in lagoons in the Baja area is to, to breed is because there is more protection from the, for the newborn calf from sharks and other predators. After they are done breeding and the calves are old enough to make the voyage, they head back to the Bering Seas for feeding. But there is some risks on the journey. The gray whales are threatened with many things like killer whales attacking the mother and calf. These 30-ton powerhouses would seem to be at the very top of the food chain. But here, in Monterey Bay, they face a fierce predator. Killer whales, also known as orcas. These smart hunters don't dare target adult gray whales. They wait for a migrating pod of mothers and their newborn calves. The grays usually hug the coast, but in the bay, they must swim across open water. It's a dangerous passage for the youngsters. Marine biologist Nancy Black has spent more than a decade studying killer whales. A few years ago, we found killer whales closing in on a gray whale, female and calf. I was really excited because it was one of the few times I've had an opportunity to see killer whales hunting together as a team. It's very rare because Monterey is one of the few places in the world where we have an opportunity to see something like this. The killer whales circle a mother and try to separate her from her calf. The distressed youngster struggles to climb on its mother. She rolls belly up to give the baby a better platform. The mother rolled on her back and actually swam belly up for quite a while and that's a way to um, probably keep the calf on her a little bit better. But the killer whale won't give up. One orca moves alone against a whale six times her size as she tries to separate the calf from the 30-ton mother. If that killer whale got hit or squished in between the, the gray whale, she could be injured. So I was really surprised to see that it was the same female in that position the entire time. And this killer whale actually did have its fin ripped a little bit. But the bond between mother and baby is strong. The calf spent a lot of time rolling on top of its mother and alongside of its mother too, and that rolling behavior seemed to prevent the killer whales from getting in the middle between the mother and calf. In the end, the killer whales give up. Two and a half hours after the attack began, mother and calf escape to safety. In these turgid waters off Monterey Bay, some of the planet's largest mammals battle beneath the waves. The long journey that gray whales take is astonishing. We can only look at the gray whale and marvel at their perseverance and endurance. 